Hey, Kofi. Come here, man. What? It's Will's a Fury. Yeah, man. 40th episode. Aye. And then, Lean Man and Killer Kyle are gonna rest in peace. Oh, I hope not, man. I really like that show. Well, now we must fight. <laughs> Fury, episode 40, yeah, so, yeah that's kind of cool, yeah. we've made it to 40, yeah. so in honor of that I got you nothing, so anyway, yeah. it's been a cool week for wrestling, yeah, just watch Smash, so we'll get to that, very cool, like, a lot of amazing things, in my opinion, so, I'll see how far that goes. Do you have anything to say before we... I will say that there are some things that have... I've noticed that have come up within the last couple of days that I would like to bring up, but I will save that for later. So, in that time... Let's start off with uh, Raw, and very interesting, I said some things last week about factions, the Page faction and the Ruby Riot faction, Yeah. And I said that Ruby Riot was too early and it wasn't going to be as good as Page. I was very wrong, but we'll get to Smackdown in a minute. Yeah. So, what happened in the beginning of the show? The beginning of Raw was... Isn't that something? I can't remember what happened at the beginning of Raw for some reason. Well, I do know that Paige and her team debuted. And then yeah, they, they had a match. Yeah. What, what? I believe it was... Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Mickey James. Yes, against Paige, Sonya Deville, and Mandy Rose, and they decided to call their little group uh, Absolution, which is interesting because it was. At the beginning of the match, Banks comes out and she's doing her whole antics and then she's waiting for Mickey James and Bailey to come out and they both don't come out and then here comes Paige and Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville and they're like, oh, what happened to your tag partners? And then she goes, do you like to Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, do you know what happened to Mickey James and Bailey? They're like, no, we don't know anything. And then they show up on the Titan trail on the big screen. Both Bailey and Mickey James backstage. Mickey's holding her ankle and Bailey's holding on to her neck and it's like, oh yeah. Probably Paige and But Sonya and Mandy attacked both of them backstage before the match at some point, like probably just before. And then talking about there, oh, there was no women's revolution without Paige and mm. Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville have devoted themselves to Paige and all this other stuff. And they're essentially trying to recruit Sasha to be a member of the group. And it's like, well, you're either with us or you're against us. And then, basically, Sasha went after Paige and then... A few of them basically beat up on Sasha Banks. And then they made the referral to the team name, which I must say was interesting. It's creative. It's, uh, it's a lot better than... I'm just feeding here, that's for sure. Yeah. 
I'm just spewed on white. Yeah. But we'll see how it goes. Like I said, we'll get smacked down. Oh, is it amazing? But anyways. Yeah. So, yeah, the only other thing I can remember is the main event, which was Jason Jordan versus Kane. Kane, yeah. It was basically Kane was beating the living tar out of Jason Jordan and Jason Jordan's knee injury rehashed itself and he, uh, Jason took a count out and then Kane got a chair and was beaten up on Jason Jordan and he put the chair around Jason's head and neck and he looked like he was gonna like, go up on a sack of rope and come off on the legs of the chair and like hurt Jason Jordan right across his larynx or whatever and then you hear Roar! and here comes Braun Strowman yeah. he's rubbing his neck and everything and then so Kane and Braun get into a fist of cuffs and they're beating each other up and of course Braun is getting the batter of Kane and you know beating him up and hitting him with the steel steps and then he takes the bigger base part of the steel steps, puts them in the ring does a power slam onto the the steps and then goes over, grabs a chair and essentially does to Kane what Kane did to him the week before and you see Kane out of the ring, over the barricade, kind of through the crowd he's coughing and hacking and yeah. you know, breathing like somebody with a smoker's cough or whatever. Somebody else a chain smoke or whatever and yeah. that's pretty much the way Rock was off the air. Yeah, and that was pretty cool. I like how that happened though. Going through the crowd, you don't see it that often. Yeah, but I thought that was a hardcore match at some point. Was mm -hmm. that No. Alright. But there was the match with Matt Hardy and... Oh, oh yes! Was Elias? No. Elias was uh, going against Roman Reigns. Right. Know, for the Unicom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, obviously, he lost. Yes. Uh, Matt Hardy took on Bray Wyatt. Yeah, that's right. That's what it was. Bray Wyatt. And, of course, Matt Hardy... Loses the master Bray and he's sitting in the corner and he starts doing the whole delete thing. Uh, which is pretty much an indication that I guess he can be broken again. And I had seen not that long ago that I guess uh, Impact and Anthem or... Not yeah, Anthem, that was Anthem. That basically dropped the lawsuit or whatever yeah and so basically pretty much gives Matt Hardy free reign to carry on and renew the broken gimmick now what WWE will do with it and where they'll take it I don't know but it will be interesting I know if they go with the whole Bray Wyatt versus Broken Matt. I'm all for that. You know, it's just... Uh, yeah, it's been said, is it too late for that now? Is it too late for Matt Hardy to do that? Because as soon as they came into WrestleMania, it was like everybody in the audience started doing the delete thing. And they were starting to do the delete thing. And Matt Hardy didn't dye his hair from when he left. In no. that. So, it's almost like it was there, but it wasn't there. And now, apparently, it's there. And so it's like, okay, what more can you do now? And what, you know, it's almost like it's a little too late. Because we already know where you were going with that. We already knew that. Everybody knew that Matt Hardy was going to be broken eventually. And there were subtle hints. So you can't tell me that this is new and oh my god, Matt's broken now. How are we going to fix that? 
Because Jeff is gone, and I don't know what's going to happen to him. And, you know, what does... There's a question of, is Rebby Sky going to come back? Which, I don't know. And it's like, I'm trying to figure out what they're going to do. Because WWE is notorious for watering down the wrestlers that come from TNA and other promotions. Now, they haven't done that with... Drew McIntyre coming back, and they definitely didn't do that with Shinsuke Nakamura. And they certainly haven't done that with Bobby Roode. So, maybe this is a good thing. Who knows? I will say, though, if you, if you remember the interview that the Hardys did with Corey Graves, mm -hmm. it was kind of like, Hardy Space to say, like, seeing the fans do that was kind of like, okay, they probably watched Impact Wrestling and saw the whole Broken Matt and Brother Nero thing and what what they did with it, where they ran with it, how far they went with it, etc. So to have the fans do that when they came back to WWE was a, a kind of like a badge of honor for them, so to speak. Yeah. Now, what it could be is Matt, depending on what direction WWE takes it, goes into this broken character and have Jeff come back and be like, man, what happened to you? And it seems like ever since I've been out with this shoulder injury, You've lost your ways, you've lost your mind, you've fallen apart without me or whatever, and like have Jeff try and coerce Matt out of the shadows back to being the way he was. Mm, well, I don't really know if they'll have uh, Jeff go along with Matt into the broken gimmick. I mean, they could have Matt try and convince Jeff to, you know, join him and the, the broken side and all this other stuff, but... Well, unfortunately, we're probably never gonna hear we're trying to way to classify themselves as obsolete. Probably not. No. But, we'll see how it goes. I hope that Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy continue their feud, if that works. Yeah. I don't know. Like, at least they're focusing on Matt Hardy. Because it was always all about Jeff. Jeff was the Intercontinental Champion. Jeff was the WWE Champion. Jeff was the World Champion. And Matt Hardy was pushed aside. So now, at least they're trying to focus on Matt. Yeah, I mean, Matt had some fairly good title opportunities, but it just seemed to be... Jeff was more the go-to guy, I guess you could say, of the two. I mean, you know, WWE Champion, World Heavyweight Champion, Intercontinental Champion. It wasn't until Matt went to TNA or former TNA and became the Impact Champion or the and whatever and so you know they focused on him more so this is cool if this whole gimmick happens I love to see what they do with it well you know it's not like Matt's singles career in WWE was complete shit oh no I know you make it sound like Matt didn't really do anything relevant until he went to Impact Well, no, well, okay, so he became Cruiserweight Champion. He had a feud with Kane over Lita. He held the U.S. Championship. He was ECW Champion. I'll yes. That. I'll yes. That. I mean, no okay. Champion. Yes. I think he might have also held the Hardcore title at one Yeah. Time. So... In the art, it wasn't complete shit, but it could have been better. 
I mean, you had a feud with him and Drew McIntyre. Yeah. For the Intercontinental title, and it really was in favor of Drew Galloway, or Drew McIntyre. And yeah. It wasn't until they were both in TNA that there was a fair fight, basically. You know, because Matt had the title, then Drew had the title, then Matt had the title. Yeah. So, but I, I could see your point. But, you know, as equal of opportunities that both Matt and Jeff had during their singles run in WWE, it just seemed to be Matt was the go-to guy when they needed a feud. Jeff was the more looked upon wrestler. Yeah, it's not. It's not like you know. More um, WWE was like, oh, Jeff's better than Matt. Matt's completely useless. No. And this, that, and the other thing. It just seemed to be. I guess Jeff was the more higher praised of the two. Yeah, it seemed like it was more flashier. You know, with the like. High fly, yeah. The face paint and that, yeah. Fireworks, fuck you again, WWE. Um, but yeah, so Jeff was more charismatic, hard in the pun. Yeah, and you know, it seemed to be that throughout their career, their their career is uh, <laughs> whether it be singles competition or tag team competition. Jeff was always the one to, you know, push the envelope, do the crazy high risk dies and, you know, all this extreme stuff, so to speak. And Matt was just the map based grappling yes, yeah. kind of technical wrestler. But, I mean, you put that together. And He's, they both ended up with yeah. like multiple championships. Yeah, you know, and that, that's pretty cool in my book. And the fact that they started off in the WWE as jobbers, basically, yeah. You know, I may have watched it back then and surprised well, that Matt and Jeff first came into the WWE, I believe, in '96. Yeah, I was going to say 94 or 95, it could have been 96. Yeah. Because I remember they both had like the brightly colored uh, wrestling gear, but they also both kind of had the... The headband. Yeah, but I mean like the crew cut. Yeah, that's true. Hairstyle. And then eventually, you know, they're both grew out their hair long and... And that was a late bird heading that called the Mutton Jeff. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's just funny how their career started in WWF at the same time as Triple H and The Rock and all those yeah. guys. But it's almost like in a way, they're underrated, but they're but they're not. I don't know how to put it. Like, uh, I don't. I think when Matt and Jeff first came into the WWE, I don't really think they were taken seriously as entering competitors as wrestlers. And then I think over time, they got looked at by. Either management or wrestlers or whatever, and somebody along the way went, Man, these guys are really good. Let's do something with them. And then it was like 97, 98 ish, is kind of really where Matt and Jeff's careers actually took off. Yeah. And you know, they ended up feuding with like the APA, Edge and Christian, the, the Dudleys. Terry Reynolds, Bill Hayes, yeah, Lita, Lita yeah. Yeah, as their managers. Well, and Gangrel too. Yes, that's right. That's a pretty shitty angle. 
Yeah. But anyways, so that was good. Yeah. That was really all I can remember from Raw. So. Yeah. Smackdown was good. That was. Uh, you had. The Hype Bros go against the Bludgeon Brothers. Oh, yes, yes. And the Bludgeon Brothers, well, laid waste to Zack Ryder. They bludgeoned them to death. Mm. Fairly quick match. Yeah. And then, you know, after the match, you're talking with Ryder, and he's like, you know, last year we were title contenders, we were high on the horse, so to speak, and and te team conversations and whatever, and it was only maybe 30 seconds in, and then Mojo attacks Ryder from behind him and he starts beating the tar out of him, so to speak, and it's like, well, there goes the Hype Bros, bye bye. Yeah, and you know, I always thought it would be Zach. Because Zach came back from the injury, and it almost seemed like he was going to be the one to turn. But, but then I figured, well, I mean, he's the guy that's been there the longest. Yeah. He could turn, but at the same time. But it's true. I think that, and I've said this before, Mojo Raleigh won the Battle Royal Andre the Giant thing in WrestleMania. He's had opportunity wasted in my, me and Bali, he faced gender for the title, yeah, whatever. The fact of the matter is, the guy didn't get his... I don't know, he... Didn't get his just dues. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. As a singles guy, and then... Uh, and then you fucked up with Zack Ryder, you, you could've fucking went somewhere with Mojo Raleigh, but no, we decided not to do that, so now you made him heal. Now, hopefully, because you love to make your heels look good, you're gonna do something great with Mojo, Mojo Raleigh, as maybe. A, yeah, put, give him a deserved singles run and see what you do with it, where you go with it, blah 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 blah. And then, of course, there was also AJ Styles against the same brothers. That match was. Good boy. He pretty much had a feeling it was going to be AJ Styles mm -hmm. to get the win over these two scrawny half ass piss ants. Yeah, it's pretty predictable if you ask me. Kinda, yeah. Of course, at the beginning you have AJ come out and you know, get attacked by gender and then the three of them are beating up AJ before the match even begins and then you know when the match actually starts you've got the same brothers basically taking advantage of the attack by gender and then and them two but ultimately it was AJ winning with a pretty sweet move I must say yeah. had one of the same brothers on the canvas and then AJ's up in the corner, he's sitting in the corner, and it looks like the other thing brother's gonna try to hark and run him. AJ basically holds on to him, hooks both his legs over his arms, and then just falls forward with the stylus collapse onto the other thing brother, and then gets the pin. And then, of course, Junior gets in the ring before Junior can do anything to AJ. AJ's right out of the ring, and of course, a Junior is a seething, angry, Dude, and he's so irate that he friggin' gives the million dollar dream Cobra clutch to both the same. I can't wait to see how what they do next with Sami Zayn and yeah, Kevin sure. Owens, kind of like the new Quebecers, if you will. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. I hope that picked that up too. I didn't even look. Uh, camera malfunction. Yeah. But besides the point, like I said before, I, I was glad I was wrong about one thing, and that was Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot. I thought 
was too soon. Well, not exactly that it was too soon, but the fact that she started a faction the same time Paige started her yeah. faction. Holy shit, was that an impact. Yeah. You've got fucking Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, and uh, Sarah Logan. Sarah Logan coming out and they have a match. Yeah. And they. It's. Someone got barricaded between the turnbuckle and the stairs. That was for Naomi. Naomi. That's too bad it wasn't Italian. You know. Well, fucking Natalia ran away like she little bitch. Exactly. And then it was just. Charlotte and Naomi. The three of them decided to ultimately eliminate Naomi from the match and then just basically single out Charlotte and pretty much three on one her and win the match. Well, the thing that was really cool was her backstage doing an interview. And talk about, you know, Ruby Riot coming in with Lev and Sarah, and Ruby's like, oh, Lev Morgan, she's sweet and innocent until you get her mad, and then she'll rip you in half. And then Sarah Logan is the most dangerous southerner she's ever met, and collectively they call themselves the Riot Squad, which right. is pretty cool. And the Lion Squad's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. And see, to me... Okay, you have... Paige Sarnia Deville and Mandy Rose take out... Mickey James and Bailey before the match. Okay, that's... Your pretty much atypical heel way of doing things. But if you really want to make an impact and a statement to prove you are probably going to be a dominant threesome or group, faction, whatever you want to call it, you do what the Riot Squad did. Okay, yes, Natalia hightailed it out of there and ran, sat around like a scared little bitch, but the fact that they took out Naomi and then, you know, were able to win against the women's champion and Charlotte, that shows something. And I mean, like, okay, you've got on Raw, Alexa Bliss, for showing that she wants nothing to do with Paige and the Absolution group, but that's just mind game, so to speak. That's not really a dominance display, yeah. if you will. What the Riot Squad did, now that's how you show dominance. Oh yeah. Man, that was fucking awesome. Yeah. And it's true though, like you know, when Oscar came out, you were thinking, Either she's gonna... Because they weren't attacking Asuka. No. So it's like, alright, they're gonna see Asuka turn heel and join their team, or they're just not attacking her out of respect. But Possibly. I'm not sure. But yeah, definitely for sure, Ruby Riot's team is much more better. And that's even a word. But they're awesome. They <laughs> they need business and they kicked a lot of ass and they yeah. aggression. It was awesome. Yeah. And I mean, that's not to take anything away from Paige, Sonya Deville, or Mandy Rose. It just seems to be that the Riot Squad has something more to prove over Absolution. Because, you know, Paige has already established herself as the veteran, so to speak, and, you know, she brought in these two young guns to the main roster to kind of mentor them and guide them through the women's division and the main roster and that, but, you know, 
the Riot Squad, they're basically on their own. Now, they might, you know, behind the scenes get advice from somebody like Natalia or maybe Charlotte or whoever, but as far as, like, going out there and getting it done and showing what you can do as a unit is really cool. Because, like, with the so Absolution Group, it's like, Paige is the leader and Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose are her followers. Yeah. The Riot Squad is, this is probably going to be a bold statement, but I'll say the Riot Squad is the shield of SmackDown. Uh, no, I definitely agree with that statement. Because the shield knows how to work collectively as a unit, whether it be in a tag team match, in a sex man match, but they've also established themselves enough to have credibility as singles competitors. With the Riot Squad, they are starting off at, like, okay, we've seen on NXT what Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan can do as singles competitors. Sarah Logan still relatively new to the wrestling business. I mean, she did a fair showing for herself during the Mae Young Classic, but other than that, hasn't really fully had in-depth singles matches. Like, she, I think she might have had a few matches on NXT, but I, or maybe live events, but I'm sure there's, those were, uh, tag team matches. I don't really think they were singles matches, but nevertheless, you have the three of them just showing how well they can work together as a threesome and, you know, be able to take out Naomi and scare off Natalia and then, you know, to get a victory over the SmackDown Women's Division's head honcho, so to speak, in Charlotte, it goes to show you, like, okay, these girls mean business and these girls are, you know, out for blood, you could say. And, you know, I can understand Alicia Fox running away like a little bitch, so to speak. And Natalia running away like a little bitch. But your women's raw champion running away. Like, to me, that's not okay. Like, you, Alexa Bliss is your champion. Yeah. Despite whether I like her or not, she's your champion. And she needs to be the one that's more of a challenge for Paige. And go face to face with Paige. And then they have a match. And yeah. And who knows. But yeah, for her to be that kind of a heel and champion at the same time, it doesn't really set well with me. Yeah. But. Anyways, so. And like I said before, the Falls Count Anywhere match was fucking awesome. Yeah, it was good. Um, really, really well done. <laughs> we, so we got to the 205. Alright. And really, it was meh. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't anything special, really. No. So, I mean, what? It was Jack Gallagher versus can't even remember now. And once again, I just saw it not too long ago. I don't know, Drew Gulag. Divine. Yeah, they teamed up and called them um, oh, power to PowerPoint. Yeah, that's right. That's why they're trying to hammer that back into people. That's pretty cool though. I think that's fun. Yeah. But, you know, I th yeah, 205, Hideo Itami, they're talking about him again. And making his eventual 
debut on 205. Yeah. So it was an okay show. Wasn't nothing spectacular, so. I mean. It, it was good, but I, as the cliche saying goes, was nothing to write home about. No. So. Well, and from that, we go on to NXT. And they came to us from San Antonio. Yeah, at the Aztec Theater. Hell yeah. That, that was a really nice place. The theater, really nice. Yes, and you know, it's awesome when you have a company go to different territories. Like, it's always in Florida, the yeah. NXT, so it's nice when they can branch off to somewhere else, like Texas. Yeah, I mean, it really only ever seemed like NXT would branch off when they had a takeover event. Yeah. So it was nice to see an actual NXT event somewhere other than Florida. And it looked a lot better too. Yeah. Although I will say it was rather interesting having the entrance, so to speak, and the ring like meeting you away from each other. Oh yeah. That's right. Or well, that was in that was yeah, that was interesting. Or, like, or maybe me to that chair over there, away from each other. Like, I was almost reminiscent of uh, WrestleMania 10, in a way. Kind of, yeah. In Madison Square Garden. But, uh, once again, Pete Dunne impresses me every fucking time. Yeah. It was Pete Dunne and Mark Andrews against the Mustache Mountain. <laughs> duo of uh, Tyler Bate and the veteran Trent Sever. And, you know, as young as Tyler is, only 20 years old. Yep. You know, and already moves just as good. And the British always, like the Japanese, the British always have that unique, hard-hitting style, if you will. It's not, I don't know if it would be strong style, but... Yeah, kind of. See how these people move. Like, Dunn hit a bait with the stiffest elbow <laughs> I have ever heard uh, in a long time. Oh, yeah, it was like smack right in the side of the face. Like, okay, that <laughs> was freaking hard. But, I mean, they were, I mean, the mustache duo won. And Pete beat the. Uh, his tag team partner up. Yep. And so, I'm trying to think what else happened on. I know Lars Sullivan got a, a little package. Yeah. I'm trying to think about Well, there was also Peyton Royce against... Oh, yeah, yeah. Curie Sane. Yes. Uh, yeah. I hate Peyton Royce. I really do enjoy Curie Sane. I enjoyed the commentary talking about the retired Japanese wrestlers yes. in Japan yeah. uh, that have come to WWE. But it was really cool. I like her style, as uh, of course. And I hope that one day she'll get a shot at the WWE NXT title. Oh, I'm sure she will. And what's cool is next week, it'll be Sony Deville versus... Uh, Ruby Riot in a no holds barred match. Yeah. If that was any good as Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens, that would be fucking cool. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah. Those matches always impress me. Yeah. But, yeah, once again, NXT was really good. Yeah. In the tag team match, guys, he learned something interesting, and that is. Well, the order of the age between the four, it was Trent Severn, Mark Andrews, Pete Dunne, and then Tyler Bate. Trent Severn, I said, was 35. Oh, yeah. Pete Dunne's 24, of course. Tyler Bate's 20. And I'd, um, I'm not exactly sure how old Mark Andrews is, but I'd say he's probably, I don't know, around my age, maybe. Probably, yeah. 
20s at least. Yeah. Uh, like, they did make mention of the fact Mark Andrews was older than Pete Dunne. They didn't really say by how much or, you know, how old Mark Andrews actually is, but, yeah. Yeah. There's that. There was also the Street Prophet <laughs> and Tito Sabatelli and R uh, Riddick Moss. Yeah, and it's gonna be interesting how far the street crack goes. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's... They're alright, I guess. It's yeah. just too stereotypical. Mm -hmm. And whatever it is, what it is. There's no mention of Alistair Black or anybody like that this week. No. As far as I know, so... Yeah. That was a good show. And then we go on to Smash. I think Smash was... I just watched it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a really cool main event with Tyson Dukes and Petey Williams for the Smash Championship. Match before that was a tag team match between TDT and the well oiled machines. Yes, and it's funny, I was thinking I was watching that match, and there was a fantasy pro wrestling game, and I made a tag team called the Lumberjacks from New Brunswick or whatever. And then I see these guys, and it's like, well, that's kind of like a carbon copy of what I thought of back then. Yeah. But it's really cool to see these guys, and it was a really cool match. These guys are awesome, and then you got Axe Sutter and Mike from, well, essentially Impact, and then Mike from can -Am Wrestling Dojo. Dojo. And so it's, it was a really good match. Of course, you get the silliness from. Well, all of the machines. And there was an interview with Tyson Dukes, and he was talking about Kevin Owens, or Kevin Steen back then. Yeah. And, you know, talking about the matches that he had, and apparently, and I never knew this, um, I guess Tyson Dukes must have had dark matches in WWF, because I don't remember him really wrestling or doing a silly dance for that matter. Yeah. So there was a point where it was Kevin Owens and then Tyson Dukes and Jimmy Corderas even joining in and doing this little dance there. Yeah. But that was pretty cool to see that. And yeah, basically that was a pretty good show. Yeah, Tyson Dukes basically said he got the idea for the dance watching Looney Tunes and how they do kind of the off-stage dance routine thing. Yeah. The shuffle or whatever it was. And he just took it and essentially modified it and made it his own. Yes. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And of course, it was nice and deuce in Kevin Steen's last match with Smash. Yeah. That they did that little dance. But one thing that Tyson made reference to that I found fun, kind of funny is the two of them were outside the ring and Kevin's starting to kind of crawl away from Tyson and he sees there's somebody sitting kind of like the front row, I guess, wherever they were, and there was like a tray of fries tucked under her chair, or tucked under the chair. Probably just had fries and a hot dog or fries and a burger or whatever and didn't eat all the fries so just stuck it on the floor under the chair. And Tyson goes, just as sure as I know myself, I know he's going for those fries. And he says, I could either do take it one of two ways. I could either get hit with the fries and make it look like I got hit by a ton of bricks or an anvil or whatever, go down whatever, or I could take the fries and just stand there, not sell it at all, and just kind of look disgusted, and he said that's what he did, so of course Kevin picks up the tray, throws it at Duke, Duke stand, it hits him, he just stands there like, really, you threw fries at me, 
and then they go into the next spot, match continues, go home with the package pile mm -hmm. driver from Steam, match ends, and then they do the whole dance routine yeah. with Super Crudders. And what Tyson said was, it was nice to have them, it kind of end on a high note. Instead of, you know, hard and aggressive and, you know, the match ending or whatever. Have the match end and then kind of do that little stick. Good way for Kevin to go out. And, of course, and you have Kevin on the microphone giving praise to Tyson Dukes. And he's like, oh, you're one of the best wrestlers, not just in Canada, but in all of North America. And if it sounds like I'm kissing your ass, or it's pretty much what I'm doing, because all the guys in the back and anybody in the wrestling business can learn a thing or two from you. And it's like, to get praise like that from a guy like Kevin, mm. who I'm sure at that point was probably a pretty established wrestler, and Tyson, yeah, I'm sure he was established but probably not to the quality that he is now but still to get praise like that is pretty cool yeah that was awesome uh, i honestly didn't know kevin really wrestled in smash yeah neither did i but it was pretty cool to see yeah and next weekend we're gonna finally go see smash live Live at the venue in Peterborough. Uh huh. It'll be can't say representing, but sponsored mm -hmm. by uh, AIDS Research. Yeah. So it'll be a fun show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. That's all I can say about that. Yeah. So we go to Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor was cool. There was the Bullet Club in the main event. Coast to coast. Yeah. But Gordon and Bullet Club ended up getting the two yes. on that one. Yeah, it was a cool match and, you know, I enjoyed the Bullet Club. Yeah. You also saw, well, there was the Caprice Coleman incitement where... Yeah, he was talking with uh, the current Ring of Honor television champion, Kenny King. Kenny and Chicken! And they're finally gonna, looks like they're gonna have a match at some point. Caprice Coleman's talking smack about Kenny's daughter. Yeah. Going to bring her up all the time. And yeah. It'll be fun to see where it goes. War Machine was yes. supposed to have a tag team match against somebody. And the addiction comes out and... The four of them are brawling with each other. There was a incident that happened that uh, generally don't see in wrestling. It was, I think it was Hanson had Kazarian up on his shoulders and it looks like he was going to kind of launder Kazarian into Daniels. And but Daniels moved, and then Kazarian ends up making contact with a woman in the front row. And uh, to say she got uh, injured would be an understatement. Oh, yeah, 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 that was messed up. Like, I don't know if that was planned. Like, usually, sometimes someone's in on whatever, yeah, but you never know. Like, that was kind of it, almost reminded me of when Kevin Steen. Punched out uh, Jay Lethal's mom, and mm. Jay Lethal's parents were in the crowd, and he got carried away. And then it's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I was aiming for Jay Lethal, and then what well, you could even see like the four of them were like, "Oh fuck, what the <laughs> hell do we do? What the hell just happened?" Yeah, and but there was just like they did that spot, we'll call it, and then. They just kind of standing around going, oh my god, is she okay? What the hell do we do? Do we continue? Do we stop? Do we... What the hell do we do? We're going to be in big shit, whatever. And then the segment ends.
Impact. That's the Gail Kim's right title shot. Yeah. So Gail Kim wins the Narcos Championship at Pound for Glory in a three way, but she rel relinquishes it because she's retiring, and so they're having a tournament to determine the champion, and they're having two three way matches, and then. The winners of those three-way matches will have a one-on-one -on -one match, and the winner of that match will be the new Knockers champion. And the first one was Laurel Van Ness, Two Scoops, Casey Spinelli, oh, fuck yeah. and Madison Rain. They're probably, I'm hoping that they are impact this weekend. I can't believe I fucking missed it. Oh, well, they more than likely will easily do. Yeah. But, uh, in an interesting twist, Laurel Van Ness gets the win. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. And you know, what they're doing with her character right now is similar to what they were doing with her character when kind of Braxton left her at the altar, but it's not as stupid <laughs> over the top. Yeah, disturbing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a shame that they had to go that route again, but... Yeah. Whatever. It's, uh, it's also cool for me to see Casey Spinelli do the with Impact. Yeah. You know, meeting her it was pretty cool yeah. uh, two years ago, uh, where I'm originally from. So... I uh, you know, and it's too bad she won't be on the Smash show. Yeah. Um, in Peterborough, but it's fine. Yeah. Uh, what else? You saw Impact. I did. Yeah, so what else happened? Well, they had the match with Alberto El Patron yes. and Johnny Impact. They basically beat the living crap out of each other for most of the match. Yeah. I mean, that sounds about right. They're an epic battle backstage. That's one of the better ones I've seen in quite some time. Yeah, I really wanted a Pepsi then. <laughs> yeah. What was their match like this time? I really wasn't paying too much attention to the whole match because I was kind of talking on Facebook and stuff like that, so I wasn't fully integrated into the match, but... It looked, from what I was able to see, it looked pretty physical and I'd say fairly brutal. And I do believe it was Mundo that got the win. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have Chris Adonis and Eli Drake come out and start stomping a mud hole in Johnny. And then... You know, so they're two on one in them, and then out comes P.D. Williams for the save, and so that'll probably next week be a tag match between those four. And you also had another match with James Storm and Tejano Jr., Okay. It was a fairly good match. Of course, Storm ended up getting the win. And then, of course, before the match even starts, they show American Top Team in the building. And, of course, have KM still trying to get apprenticeship or initiated into the group. And it's like, now we got a cowboy to take care of. Obviously, they're talking about Storm from the previous week, and so they come out and uh, start beating up Storm. And um, first, it was all of them are beating on uh, Storm, and then the guy that took the beer bottle to the head. Of course, he's wearing a neck brace and he got his head all wrapped up, and he's like, "Let me take him out. Let me take care of him." Let me finish him off, of course. He's got the beer bottle in his hand. And it looks like he's going to do the storm. Storm did to him. 
but then he takes the last call super kick and that causes all of them to come in and jump on storm and then moose comes out with a chair and chases them all off and then you got lambert on the microphone saying all right you want to be getting involved in our business well it's going to be you two against King Mo and myself, and I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Yeah. What the fuck does Lambert know about wrestling? Oh, other than his display of championships, he, I don't think he would know a wrist lock from a wrist watch. So yeah. that'll be uh, interesting. Well, he needs to piss off and get through puberty. I can't go to Roger Thurston. No, fuck off. Yeah, I mean, how much higher could a person's voice get? Seriously. So, I guess there's gonna be that much. Yeah. Shit. There was also Tyson Dukes against Ooh. Matt Seidel. Oh, that would have been cool. That, yeah, that was a really good match. I can't wait to see that, for sure. Yeah. Two um, matches, at least. Yeah. You also had the guy that won the Global Forged, uh, Hakeem Salem, I think is his name. Mm. He had a match with... Crap, I can't remember. He had a match with somebody anyways, and he, he lost. Can't wait till I get to see you. Crap, I can't remember. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, despite the whole thing with Squeaky and Moose and King Mo, yeah, can't wait to see the other two matches. I mean, I got Explosion, but that only covers one match, plus well, yeah. two matches if you want, plus well, you know past matches. Yeah, you get a. Relatively recent match, you could say, and then they do the around the ring segment, and then they show past matches. Yeah, one past match, and then they'll show a match from the impact the week before, I believe. Because the episode I saw, they were going to re show the Eli Drake gravy boat turkey trot thing. Yeah. But for the Around the Ring segment, I was intrigued by it because they had Diamante oh, yeah. on there. You know, I really would like to see Grado leave Impact and go to the British Championship Tournament. Or, well, whatever that show is called. They eventually go to NXT anyways. Who either... ICW or NGW. Yeah. Yeah, well, I know he's been to ICW. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, they're not doing too much with him anymore. Well, they never really did. He had a riveting feud with Al Snow, and then mm. the thing with Joseph Parks. But other than that, they didn't do too much with him, so... <laughs> And speaking of Joseph Parks, there is an interesting segment with him and his law firm that they showed. I won't give it away, but let's just say it was unique, it was kind of corny, and there's another dude involved, I guess. He's also a member of the Park, Park, and Park law firm, whatever. I think I remember that somehow. I don't know where I saw it. But yeah, I didn't watch Impact this week. I'm sure I'll catch it on the weekend. But yeah. So this was a pretty cool week in wrestling. I think we covered everything. Pretty much. I think Class of Champions is coming. Class of Champions is coming up. Yep. Class of Champions is coming up. We got Smash and Peterborough. And if you're from Peterborough, hopefully you'll go. Hell, if you're in Ontario anyways, they'll be going. It's going to be fun. Other than that, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next week. I am looking forward to Impact. 
except for a few things, but yeah, it was a pretty good show. Finally, Kel yes. and I are wearing wrestling shirts. Yeah. So uh, there's that's cool. Now, before we go, I would like to say I made a website. I can't. I'll post a link, and it's. Really nothing special, it's just posting the videos that we made and I wrote a blur on all of them or whatever, so yeah, check it out. And of course, check out my Twitter account, uh, Kyle's Twitter account, mm -hmm. you know, you can ask us questions, I like to answer them. Anything wrestling, anything about us, anything that you want to learn about something you might not know or something that you know about but you want to learn more about or anything and everything. Yeah. Just put it out there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because I would love to do a Q&A. Yeah. You know, I would love to do that. I would love to do like... 30 facts, though I don't know how personal we can get. I don't know. Well, we'll figure it yeah. out. Yeah. Well, before we close this thing out, I did say at the top of the oh, yeah. video that I had some things I wanted to discuss that I had noticed over the last couple of days. One was I had seen, I don't know if you've seen it or not, probably not, I had seen a picture on Facebook. It's of Charlotte and she is surrounded by the Raw Women's Championship, the SmackDown Women's Championship, oh, yeah. the NXT Women's Championship, and the Divas Championship. And there's a caption underneath the picture that says first ever female Grand Slam Champion. Now there were some comments made on this video that kind of give it controversy because there's dissension in the fact that can you really call Charlotte a Grand Slam champion when the Divas title is no longer active and it's like well I would say yes, even though it's no longer active, it's essentially retired, I guess you could say. It, she held it, so it would count. Well, yeah, and who gives a shit? I mean, and that's what I mean. Like, oh, well, this doesn't exist. Who fucking cares? Yeah. You know, like... Uh, well, there was also mention made of the fact that because when Charlotte held the NXT Championship because she didn't defend it on what they call WWE television that it has no relevancy and it's like would you not consider the WWE Network WWE television because I mean you got NXT you got 205 live you got all the Raw and Smackdown pay-per-views and the big four and yes there's other content on there but for the title WWE Network would kind of indicate that it's you know WWE television it's content it's what you know it's how it, and it was everything except for main event Superstars and we're on SmackDown unless you want to watch this week in WWE. True. So it's like, you know, once again, who gives a shit? You know, yeah. people are always so fucking, nitpicky. you know, <laughs> nitpicky and bitching and complaining and, and working. fucking pieces of shit need to learn some fucking respect. I'm sick and tired of it. You know, yeah, okay, the Divas Championship doesn't exist anymore. Guess what? I hate the spinner belt, but I'm not going to say, I'm not going to sit there and go, well, you know, CM Punk was the third longest WWF cha or WWE champion because he had the spinner belt. No, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to go, yeah, but you know what? I hated the spinner belt, but you know what? 
It was modern. It was worth the times. Yeah, CM Punk didn't have a very good run. Even though he was the longest champion, they didn't have a very good run with it. And fuck you, Vince, for that too. But CM Punk was still the third longest running champion. Yeah. Another thing is somebody had commented about whether or not WWE would recognize Charlotte as a Grand Slam champion. And it's like, okay, yeah, they make mention of her being SmackDown Women's Champion, Raw Women's Champion, and the, you know, the odd time throw out that she was also NXT Women's Champion. But, haven't really made any kind of reference to the Divas Championship, which to me kind of makes sense, but I mean, well, you make reference to Roman Reigns being a Grand Slam Champion, even though debatable about the U.S. Championship, but I digress from that. You would think that somewhere along the lines, we could make... Not make a whole to do about it, but at least make some sort of reference about it. Charlotte being a Grand Slam champion. Oh, it's like saying Kevin Owens is a Grand Slam champion because he won the Universal Championship, the Intercontinental Championship. Was he the tag team champion? I I don't know about that. Uh, I don't think he was. I don't think no, he wasn't. So they wasn't. I mean, fine, but he was the Intercontinental, the U.S. The Universal, but I guess, yeah, Grand Slam means you won more than that, but whatever. Yeah, Grand Slam basically means you win, like, four, call them, major championships. I think the main part is, don't fucking sit there and do this and say, I can't believe this, Charlotte's a piece of shit. Yeah. Because, you know, you guys can go fucking, you know, whatever. whatever. I can't even believe I almost went there. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, you people are scum, and you need to stop. You know, this is crap, but you know, this is not cool. Yeah, the Divas Championship probably meant nothing, but Charlotte has earned every right to be called the Grand Slam Champion. I don't know anybody else that has had the Divas Championship, the NXT Women's Championship, the Raw Women's Championship and SmackDown Women's Championship, and Charlotte's done it. Yeah. Like it or not, Charlotte's done it. Oh yeah, you know, and that's why I said that I would have Charlotte go over Alexa Bliss no problem, because Charlotte's done it. Charlotte's been there. I know Alexa Bliss should have been there with it in NXT, but she was a manager, and that was fine. But Charlotte is like it or not the only Grand Slam Women's Champion. Yes. So, number two on the subject, I had seen that apparently a lawsuit is being filed by the Ford company on John Cena. What the fuck? Apparently, he had bought a Chrysler, was it Chevy, Chrysler, GT, or whatever, and... Because he, I think they said, he was like, he bought it, and then he restored it, or whatever, and, like, flipped it, and then, I don't know if he resold it, or whatever, and because he didn't have full ownership of the vehicle for, like, oh my God. the two-year time period, there's that whole mess. So, yeah, oh my God, there's that. And the final thing <laughs> is, I don't know if you are familiar with the name Jim Johnson. Uh, maybe. He was the, um, composer, you could say, for WWE. He kind of helped wrestlers get their entrance music. Like, he would write them or... Oh, okay. Per play that whatever well i had seen yesterday was it or today that after 30 years with the wwe they decided oh. to release him jesus christ yeah you know it just keeps going down and down and down you know i said this before 
the company that I stand by and I struggle and I struggle and everything I fucking hear about the WWE is they're Satan and everything they're doing is wrong. They're not focusing on anything important anymore. And I was like, oh, well, we gotta have a lawsuit. You know, you take a guy like Jimmy Jacobs. You put him on your NXT and because he took a picture on the box up, he's now going on Impact and he's mocking you guys. And yeah, he is mocking you guys with another guy that you fucking fired, fucking Josh Matthews. And, you know, it's a fucking joke. Yeah. Vince McMahon needs to be fucking fired. And I'm sorry, it's his product. Whatever he, you know, he's seven. He's seventy-two years old, making wrong decisions. And and Paul Vec and Stephanie McMahon and Shane McMahon aren't doing a goddamn thing about it. And it's one of those things that is fucking bullshit. And the product is getting worse every fucking year because it's behind. It's more or less behind the scenes, you know. That's yeah. fucking everything up. Essentially, yeah. And I'm great. I don't know how long I could stand. I don't know how long anybody could stand watching that product. Yeah. You know. But just, politics is bullshit. That's, I don't know, I've been saying that for a long time. And it's getting worse. And, you know, it's getting to the point where, and that's why your company sucks. That's why your production sucks. You call yourself an entertainment company, yet you have you took all the fireworks and the fire and all that glorious bullshit that makes your product half decent and is entertainment. I mean, yeah, wrestling's entertainment. I love wrestling. It's my passion. But you take that, it's supposed to be a product. You had Survivor Series, and you didn't throw that in there. You're big four, and you didn't throw that in there. You take all your main events, and you should put that in your events. Otherwise, your Kane entrance is going to look stupid. Your Brock Lesnar entrance is going to look stupid. Although he doesn't even do the jumping thing anymore. Yeah. And, you know, it's like their company is no longer interesting. Yeah. You know, I mean, a lot. Of, I know I say that it's been better than it has in a few years, but Christ, I, I don't understand what's going on, and it's mostly just backstage politics. Yeah. Like, God damn, you know. And who, who do you fucking turn to? Well, 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 I guess we can't turn to anybody, because one wrong move and they can get fired. Yeah, I know. Ah, uh, fuck. So, I will say, hopefully whatever this bullshit is with Cena gets resolved. Best of luck to... Yeah. Jim Johnson and his future endeavors, whatever he decides to do. And so, with that all being said, the week in WWE yeah. was good. Uh, yeah, despite everything I said, the week in WWE was really good. Hopefully, good. we'll be able to do some sort of video or whatever from live from Smash. Yeah, and, you know, we'll uh, see how it goes because I don't know about the copyright thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. I know that I did take small video from the Oshawa show. It was just a small slideshow, basically. Yeah. So who knows? We'll see. I'll see. I'll see what I can do. Yeah. I can't promise anything, but that's, you know, it would be cool. That's not why I brought it up. Anyways, and before I go, I'd like to say a shout out to one of my YouTube subscriptions that I watch. Uh, kid Behind the Camera, he's from uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Oh yeah. I know that his dad's in the hospital right now. And yeah. shout out to Angry Grandpa. Get better soon. Take your medication. Yeah. Still take your medication. It'll help you live, you know, not feel like crap and you'll feel good and you'll have an appetite and you'll carry on to Whatever age you end up at. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. Yeah, you have to do that. Yeah. You know. We need you. We need to see more videos. Yeah. But uh, anyways, that's uh, pretty much it. And uh, So for 
myself, Killer Kyle, aka the Heartbreak Kid, me and Matt, and Matt aka the Hitman, the Hitman. Yeah, it's been great. The best there is, the best there was, and always the best there ever will be. You got that right. Wheels of Fury, episode 40. We'll see you again later.